Good morning and welcome to 7 at 7. So glad to have you guys with me this morning. God has some great things for you today. I'm excited to dive into the Word. I'm going to go off of Romans 12 once again. I'm going to jump in to some of what God has to say about it. Because it's such a powerful thing. If we can get this into us and if we can begin to apply this, it will literally transform us. Um, in fact, that's exactly what it says it will do. But before we dive into uh, p- applying this in our lives, I want to invite you to hop in the chat, say hi, let us know that you're there. If we can be praying with you, post that in the chat as well. Look for somebody else's prayer request, let them know, pray for them, and then let them know that you're praying. And then if God's already answered any of those prayers, post those in the chat so we can celebrate the goodness of God and His faithfulness together. Well, this morning... Romans, or whatever time you're watching, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2 has kind of been our springboard. Pastor Duane mentioned it on Sunday, and it's so powerful that I just wanted to look at this. And I, I think I, I touched on this a little bit last week. And it goes through and it says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, to present your bodies, it goes on, to, as a living sacrifice. We talked about that yesterday. But then he goes on and he says, um, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And I wanted to break this down really simple. And I I gave out a challenge last week as I want to encourage everybody to get into the Word for themselves. Uh, 7 at 7 is supposed to help us build a habit of seeking God, not to replace our own time with the Lord. And I want to invite you into the Scriptures. If we'll let these, they will shape us. See, when we talked uh, one of the days this week about letting God's Word form our thinking, um, that that it should shape us. See, as we, as we go into this, and it says not to be conformed, the world's trying to conform you into its pattern. It's trying to go, this is how you think. This is what you view as okay. Here is how you talk. Here is how you live. Here is what you value. Here is what you try to achieve. Here is what success looks like. It's all things that the world's trying to push on us. But the Bible says not to be conformed to the pattern of this world, but to be um, transformed by the renewal of your mind, to let God's word get in and to reshape you, to reshape what is success, to reshape what it is that you desire, to reshape the way that we deal with our spouse and our children. And there's so much that goes into this. But the, the process of renewing our mind is getting God's thoughts to become our thoughts. And we do that with the word. When we get into this word and we go through and we say, you know what, God, What is it that you say about the areas of my life? What is it that you say about marriage? How is it that you tell me I'm supposed to treat my spouse? You know, and and Ephesians 5 goes through and begins to lay this out. And you go, hey, how should I be speaking? Well, let's look through Proverbs or look through the book of James. James chapter, um, actually, 3. One's got some great nuggets in it. But throughout, you know, all of Proverbs, it keeps telling you, here's how the wise person speaks. If we'll get God's word inside... It can reshape how we talk. It can reshape how we live. Um, and it reshapes our thinking. In fact, in James, no, Galatians, I'm going to go Galatians. Galatians 5, I touched on a verse from there. I talked on verse 13 yesterday. But I want to invite you to read Galatians 5 today. And I want to invite you into the Word, into an interactive experience. And this happens when I go from reading it just to check it off a list and to say I've accomplished a spiritual discipline to, God, what do you want to say to me? And I want to invite you to take a pen or a highlighter with you as you read uh, Galatians 5 and to mark this. And and there's some just some awesome, awesome things throughout. As it starts out saying that God, um, it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. But once we get to verse 16 through 26... It goes through and it starts spelling out what are the works of the flesh and what is the fruit of the Spirit. And I invite you to mark those. I invite you to look and to figure out what ones do you need to work on. And it might be a work of the flesh that you go, you know what, God, I need to give this up and give it to you. It might be a, hey, here is the fruit of the Spirit. This is what I need in me. God, let me fix my eyes on you because I love... In verse 16, before it gets into the, the, the fruits of the flesh, the works of the flesh and fruit of the Spirit, it says, walk by the Spirit and you will not, de- 
gratify the desires of the flesh. He goes, if you're going to fix your eyes, if you're going to let fill you up with this, if you're going to have your focus and your goal to be pleasing God, it's going to change the way that we live. And if you'll mark these, if you'll go through and let this get inside of you, it'll change you. And if there's one that stands out to you, I invite you to share it with somebody. When we share it, it is so powerful. Now, I think I started this practice when I was in college. A friend and I would look for one verse that stood out a day. Like you'd read however much, but there was one verse and we would call it the VOTD and we would text each other. Here's the VOTD of the day. And it would just be, you know, hey, this verse stood out to me. This verse, here's one that I need to work to put away this work of the flasher. Hey, you know what? I need more of the fruit of the spirit. I need more self-control. I need to respond with more gentleness. And it was a simple thing, but it helped us get so much more out of the word. And I want to in invite you to look into the word and to share a little piece of it, to look into it and go, what word can I apply today? Um, you can, if you want to share it on Facebook, share it, hashtag Res Life Church. But if you want to just call a friend, text a friend, but find one verse and go, all right, this is the verse that I want to apply. This is where I want to see God work in my life. And as we do and we meditate on it, we will be transformed as we renew our mind with God's word. And it's such a powerful thing. Well, with that, let's get into our confessions for today. Let's confess who God says we are. So go ahead and join me. Say, I am chosen by God. I am adopted into God's family. I am redeemed and forgiven in Christ. I am seated in Christ far above every enemy. Every spiritual blessing is mine in Christ Jesus. All of God's promises are for me. I am more than a conqueror through him. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I resist the devil and he flees from me. My prayers are powerful and effective. God, I thank you that we can have powerful and effective prayers. And God, that we would be transformed, that we would renew our minds, that your word would come alive. I ask that you open up our eyes to see wonderful things in your word, that it would so come alive, that it would begin to mold us and shape us into your image, that we could know you for who you are, God, and that we would be transformed into your likeness. And God, I thank you that we could shine brightly everywhere that we go, that we could be a window into your kingdom, that it would it would set us free, that it would set those around us free, God, that you would have your way in and through us. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. Have a great day. Hope to see you guys tomorrow for 7 at 7.